All right. So um, I'm Adam Moore. I'm from the University of California, Merced. Um, uh, I'll just kind of go through these. Uh, who am I at home? I have one wife, one wonderful one wife. That was great. One wonderful wife <laughs> for 10 years. I uh, have five, five awesome kids and a dog and two cats. I work for the University of California, Merced, as I said, and I'm a PHP programmer. I've been there for about four and a half years. Um, I maintain 100 plus Drupal multi installation, and my presentation disappears. It's magic. Okay. And we're currently, releasing, we're currently working on releasing uh, Open Scholar for our graduate students. Um, eventually, we want to move this over to our faculty. Currently, our faculty already have a CMS that they use, which is uh, kind of a homegrown CMS that we did when we first started. We've only been in existence um, with students for about five years. Um, so we just kind of did a homegrown one to get started up. Um, so now it's kind of, we're feeling the age, especially since we moved to Drupal on all our other sites. And we look at our CMS, and we're like, uh. So <laughs> um, we want to give them something that they can, they can really use. Um, and some faculty don't have the technical knowledge to even do a, a Drupal type site, a normal Drupal type site. Um, so this Open Scholar gives, makes it a whole lot easier for them to do it. So in Drupal, um, I'm right in the head. Uh, and I put my number up there because I love that my number 160 and double 160, it's 320. I don't know. I'm a math nerd, so I, th I think it's awesome. <laughs> um, so I've been a Drupal member for three years. Um, started Drupal uh, when I started doing Drupal sites for the university um, and started learning from there. I co-maintained View Slideshow, which I have a presentation uh, in a couple hours here for that. Um, View Slideshow menu and advanced help and uh, the now defunct Open Flash Chart API, which is my first module. So if you ever get into module development, don't get all gung-ho and throw your first module up there because you may not want to maintain it anymore. <laughs> Uh, I actually never used that module, ever. I just did it just because I could, I guess, to see how it works. Um, so what is Open Scholar? Open Scholar is an install profile created by uh, IQSS at Harvard. Um, and I kind of wrote this because, uh, for me, this is what makes sense. It kind of brings together what Open Scholar is. So it provides a simple way for educators to build a website to showcase themselves, their classes, their research, or anything related to their area of expertise. So Open Scholar, so I saw in a blog post that uh, somebody, some, like, some magazine was writing about Open Scholar. Somebody said, well, we already have learning management systems. Why do we need, why does there need to be another one? It's not a learning management system. It's a, uh, it's a way, and especially for graduate students, I think, they use it for faculty members, but for graduate students, it's a way for them to get what publications they have, their resume, their slash CV, whatever you call it. Um, and any work that they've done out to the public. Because with graduate students, once they graduate, they need to show prospective employers or where they're gonna get hired for being faculty or whatever, what they've done. So this gives them an easy way to kind of give that exact information that employers are actually looking for. Um, so faculty member, it does the same thing, but it also promotes what they do, um, especially for uh, when they're doing uh, grant applications. And people wanna see in the graduate application, they said, what has this person done? They can point them to their website. So to install it, you go to openscholar.harvard.edu. They actually have a project site on Drupal.org um, for the install profile. Um, I don't think it's quite ready to download from there because uh, they have some patches that they put on top of it. Um, they also have some modules that are not on Drupal.org that are included mm -hmm. with it. Um, so that all needs to, I think that needs to go up on, on the Drupal.org before the install profile is ready just to kind of download and install from there. So if you go to Open Scholar, there's a download button and you can download the software from there. Um, and to install it, you just install it just like Drupal, just choose Open Scholar as the uh, installation profile. Now, Open Scholar actually includes two pieces. Uh, one is Open Scholar, the uh, well, I was talking about the resume, that type of stuff, biography, that type of stuff. The other piece is the projects, and that's meant for um, research teams. So if you're in a research team, you all could kind of collaborate on a project. We're doing this research, so we could put information about that research on this site. 
So there's actually two parts to Open Scholar. I haven't used the projects piece yet because we're not quite interested in that yet, so I'm not going to go into that. Um, but if you want to look at it, just choose the other Open Scholar projects installation profile and kind of go through there and see what it's like. So things to look out for. As of the latest version, I, not, I don't think anything's happened since yesterday, but um, in beta 7, the HD access file is not included in the download. So you'll go to install it and it says you do clean URLs aren't available. Um, and you'll say, well, my other sites work, and, but then you don't realize the HD access file is missing. You can just copy it from any Drupal installation, um, download from the Drupal website or whatever, and that'll work. There's nothing special to it. Um, second thing, when you create the site, um, as of now, uh, the admin, they have an admin menu. If you guys don't know what admin menu is, a bar that has uh, administration things you can do. Um, that is not visible. So you have to go to admin build modules, just click save configuration, and then it'll pop up. I don't know if flushing cache didn't work for me, so I don't know why, but saving, I don't know what extra function is required to get it to show up, but saving the modules is what has worked for me. The third thing is, um, in the software itself, there is a place for the users to contact you. Um, and if you don't add your contact information to contact form, um, it shows an error on that page. You need to set up your contact form. Um, so that's the first thing we do is just set up the contact form on there so then the users won't get that information. So after you set that up and you get all that done, pretty much if you're okay with how it works, you can just, that's it. It's ready to go for them to use. There's nothing else you really need to do to get set up. If you're okay with them creating their own user accounts and having their own passwords and stuff like that, then it's ready to go. That's like anybody in the world, though. It's actually... It's anybody in the world. Right. So if you're okay with that, then, <laughs> then, then go ahead. But if you're not okay with that and you need to use a single sign-on and stuff like that, then there's a lot of other things that you kind of need to do to get going for that. Um, and I won't go into it now, but if you want to ask me afterwards, uh, we use CAS for authentication. Um, if you guys want to know how to use CAS to get it to authenticate, um, just come ask me and I will, uh, I will tell you. It's not hard. CAS module mostly works um, just to kind of do it. At least mostly works for what I need it for. Uh, all right, so now we're on demo time. All right, so this right here this is uh, Open Scholar. Once you install it, um, it's the home page and lovely Windows messages. Um, so it's really barren, uh, which is good actually, because then there's not a lot you have to kind of override and take care of. But um, but by default, uh, up here they have a video, and if you guys haven't watched the video on their website, it's well worth watching the video. Um, it kind of gives you a good idea of wow, what Open Scholar is. Um, and down here, you'll see I already have one person in there. And here it'll show a, the latest people that have created websites. So it'll show as it goes along there. And also in the search box, it lets you search uh, for people. So I want to look for uh, another, another teacher. I can type their name in there and it will pull up that teacher's one. You can click on it and you'll be able to go to their website. So this, uh, this is just kind of the basic site. Um, by default, I turned on a few extra things, but by default you get the bio, so their biography. Um, I don't know if I put my bio in. I haven't put my bio in yet. Um, let's see, bio. You get that Harvard logo by default. You get the Harvard logo by default too. Yes. So the Harvard shields are there. I have a patch in there in the queue to get those removed. Um, they have, they have, uh, so they, they kind of have problems. Right now they're using their Harvard, they're using this for Harvard. So for them to take stuff out, they, they need a way to kind of be able to put it back in in the same way. Um, and it's, some of this is intermingled in with all the other stuff. So it's a lot of like stripping out code. So it takes them a little longer. Actually, they've been doing really, being really responsive. But it's going to take them a little longer to kind of get stuff out just so they can get a way to put it back in. It's not that hard to do. They find a folder with all the 
fields. And there's just a bunch of PNGs, and you pull them all out and replace them with a whole variety of different right. fields or whatever you want. Yeah. And then it has a nice little like, shield picker where you can. Yeah, and I'll, I'll show that. For, for us, we don't want shields in there at all because we don't have shields. We're, we're new. We don't have departments that have their own shields. I, I know other schools do. But we don't. And, um, and so we don't want to have those in there, so we had to strip it all out because then we confuse the users too. Because Yeah, there's one. The UC Merced logo is always going to go on there for us. Um, so by default, you get uh, bio and uh, classes and publications. Um, Biography being your biography. Uh, classes are what classes you teach. You have an option, and I'll kind of let me go ahead and log in here. Uh, all right. So, um, classes. So actually, let me go, let me go back real quick before. When you want to create new content, this Add New button always is on the home page. So you add new, and it gives you an option of what content you want to create. Um, so let me say in this type, I want to create a class. So when you create classes, it gives you an option of fall, spring, summer, when's your class. So this is really geared towards higher ed, um, although uh, Sean here has been thinking about how it could be done for, for high school and other teachers. Um, and I think this would be fantastic for other teachers too. Um, but, uh, so you choose your semester, uh, the title of your class, and then just a description. And it's not like, I'm gonna manage my class on the site. It's, I'm gonna tell you what my class is about. Um, so it's not gonna go as far as, you know, students aren't gonna submit their homework on this site. It, it's not what it's for. It's not a course management system. Um, but it's going to say, I've taught these classes in this semester, and this is what it was about. Um, and the other big thing, at least for me, listening to faculty students and what they really like, is publications. Um, publications is a big thing for faculty, especially research students, graduate students, um, because publications is what gets you hired um, and what gets you grants. Um, so, uh, so publications, they... They're allowed to, they can add a publication, they can import publications. So I guess some publications give you a format that you can import your entire publication into. Um, and I'm not. So like bib text, EndNote, okay. Mark, Risk. Um, so they've really geared this towards faculty people. Um, they know way more about faculty than I do. Um, so you can add a publication and it gives you a lot of a lot of choices, like what type of publication you have, um, and one of many. And each, each one, so let's say I have a book. These will have different choices, right? So you can have the year of publication, the abstract, full text. I mean, you can go into the full what you do with publications. Um, authors, uh, and then a whole lot of info. You should print that. I, I haven't been published, so I'm not sure what it is. Um, but all the way to, you know, to film, which may have a little bit less. Uh, well, looks like they have the same. But, so they have other ones that have, that have less fields to choose from. Um, so the way people enable and disable features in this site, so features being what I want to use, and it is actually for the technical people using the features module, um, is they go to this little features section and they choose, so all the ones that are checked on the, on the left are uh, items that are enabled. Um, and here you could choose, uh, let's say the image gallery. I can choose if I want it, let's see if I can't make this a little bigger for you guys. All right. So, I can choose if I want it private or public. So you can mark things that only people that can access your site can, can see. Um, software may be one. So software is only for people that can access the site. I don't want my software to be for everybody. Um, now, why would you do that? So mainly private is good for the projects. So you, the other installation profile I was talking about. 
So if you have a project, a group of people, and you only want to share stuff within that group of people, then you mark it as private and only can be accessed by that group of people. But let's say I want an image gallery, I can just mark it public um, and then click save and then it will be an image gallery and I'll show you that in a second. But just kind of quickly go through these. We talk about publications and their bio and their classes. Um, image gallery is what it sounds like, just a way to upload images and have images in there. Scholar Reader, um, if you guys know what the feeds module is, allows you to import feeds of stuff. So uh, if I want updated content on something that's really close to my research, um, let's say I do uh, solar research and I want every new info from Google News that talks about my research and you know you can say create an RSS feed of that search, then you can put it in there and it'll It'll populate that every time the cron runs. Um, so you can import your Twitter feed. That's another thing you can do. But any RSS feed that you want to import onto your site. Um, announcements are what you think of. It's just kind of news items that you post up onto your site. Blog is if you want to create your blog and kind of go with blog entries. Links is little side links to your site. And uh, let's see what else is important here. Um, and then I'll say, the last one I'll say is events. Uh, events lets you create a calendar and create your own events onto that calendar um, and put that on there. Uh, each one of these, so I'm going to click save real quick. Yeah? They have the capability of putting what type of content is on the front page. And I'll, I'll just because I was going to show it next, um, we'll go to customize. So, Customize lets you customize that feature. They have some options. They don't have every option, but they have some options on there you can customize. Um, so right here is what do you want the main content of your front page to be? I want it to be posts from specific features, like we have here. Oh, I want just my PIO page only to show up there. Uh, one of my posts. So that's what front page does. It lets you customize what is going to be shown on your front page. It's not, it's not the rearrange the stuff, but I will get into rearranging the stuff. Um, so each one of them have these little customized that can customize that feature specifically to what, what your needs are. Um, so I'll go ahead and close that. So now that we've added the photos, it automatically adds a menu item into the primary links. So here's my images. And then I can just add a gallery and add images to that gallery and so forth and so on. So for somebody that's non-technical, um, I think, since I'm a technical person, it's always, you always get it wrong, right? But I think uh, it should be fairly simple for them to kind of move along into to the site, which um, f for me uh, was kind of difficult for me to get my head around for, for, especially for when you have 100 sites, you have 100 different people with 100 different knowledge. Um, for this, I think it's simple and it's, we can easily push people towards how to do things. Um, oh, yeah, it, I think it's just the, just uploading a bunch of pictures. Um, so you put a title, you put a description, and, oh, you know what? No, you put a gallery first. That's right. So my gallery, and you can add a menu item if you want. Um, I'm not going to. And then here, to add a gallery, or add an image, you just kind of click add image and it'll bring up title for the image and then the picture. Since I know I have it on here. Uh, do I, oh, I have it on my desktop. Um, all right. And we'll click save. There you go. Image cache kind of did some fun stuff with that. But uh, as normal, a normal image would probably do a lot better than that one did. But you can see you can just add images on there and uh, continue to add images. And it gives you blocks too. So you have your recent images block. So it'll rotate your recent images 
onto there. Hopefully a lot better with a regular picture. Um, all right, so it's now we're going, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, so I'll go back in the control panel and we'll go to what you're talking about moving around stuff. Uh, first, our themes. So by default, when, you, when, it, uh, when it creates a site for you, it chooses a random theme form. So right now they have 12 times a lot. They have like, you have about 30 themes to choose from right now. Um, so it chooses a random one for the user. But any user can change it. So if you just go to appearance, you can see the theme I was on right here. And if I scroll through them, I can see the different themes that they have. All these are very Harvard specific. Um, so you probably want to make them for your own. But let's say I wanted this theme. So I'll, I'll go ahead and choose this theme and select it. And I need to scroll down a little bit for here. But there's also a type of theme. So I may not want blue, I want moss. And it'll update there so they can see it. Uh, they call these flavors, um, and they use a specific info file um, for the flavor. Um, but it's really simple to kind of create. Um, and then, so uh, well, I'll choose brown, and I'll go and click Save Settings. So we'll go back to my site. Okay, so here's that brown one with the links are still there. Everything's just kind of moved around um, to fit the theme, but all your content stays. They have a place for each of these things. Um, so really simply, your user should be able to switch themes um, and creating them, all it is is a CSS file. So each one of those themes, they have a base theme and then they have a CSS file. That CSS file rearranges the the mar where the sorry the regions are and the colors and stuff like that. So uh, just with using a CSS file only, you could kind of rearrange the site to what you want it to be. Uh, I won't go. I'm not a designer, so I won't go too far in how much I know about that. Um, the next thing, going back to the control panel here. Under appearance, maybe. There you go. We have site layout as another option here. So because of my mine's a little big here, uh, let me see if I can't get back to there. You guys see that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so here they show the sections of the site. Um, for example, we have that shield on there. They have a block. They have a block, right? for that shield. So I can just delete it by clicking the X on there and get rid of that shield. I may say that, oh, I want my publications by type in there. So I just kind of drag it and drop it into the spot I want. Um, if I want it into the secondary menus, which may look weird in a second, but um, I can just easily drag it to where I want it to go. Now one thing, all these up here, and this would be a bug, but all these up here has every block that you can use even if you haven't enabled the feature. Um, so for example, I didn't uh, enable the calendar feature, but somewhere in here, uh, if that was working, um, somewhere in here there is the mini calendar. Uh, I can't see it. Um, but. Uh, Last time I looked, there was the mini calendar was on there, and I hadn't enabled the feature yet. Um, so just be aware of that. It's a bug. If you guys want to submit patches, it'll be awesome. But um, all right, sorry, my thing's randomly moving on its own. Uh, so let me go ahead and click save settings. All right, and we'll go back to my site. You see my publications by type is now in the little sidebar there and, uh, and my info is on the left. Um, we'll go back to control panel and we'll go into the next thing, settings. 
So settings is where you kind of manage your menus. Um, you can see I can drag in, make menus. One thing you cannot do is create uh, submenus. I can't drag to the right if you're used to making moving menus. I can't create submenus. Um, but what they do is they say uh, my bio. I can put my bio link on the secondary menu. So that's your option. Um, so here. Uh, Another example of, I don't have a feature enabled. Calendar is listed there, but I don't have calendar enabled. But you can't choose which menu either, so um, it would be nice if it just disappeared. So I'll put my bio, well, my bio secondary menu. Um, my announcements will be at top. Well, you guys know how menus work. Um, oops, skip the. So taxonomy, you can add taxonomy terms and manage your taxonomy. Site information is that's how you change the title of your website if you want it to be something specific. Um, and the subtitle, go through here. This is what uh, Sean was talking about with the shields. Um, so here's where they, they are able to choose shields. If you have shields that you want to use, you can easily upload images to this little shield picker thing. Um, and it just kind of grabs any image that's inside that directory. And choose whichever shield you want, and it'll switch the shield for you. Uh, but here, you can also make your site private, so then it's offline, so to speak, and uh, then nobody else can access it until you're ready. Um, display the admin menu bar, what that does is this bar right here, it's not the actual admin menu module bar, this bar right here will show all the time, instead of that little control panel button I've been clicking every time. So I'll, I'll do that just so we can see it and it'll make it easier for me. Um, if you don't use shields, you can actually just click disable shields on here, but it only happens, there's no like global disable shields. So each user would have to click disable can shields. To say that again, sorry. So like for example, clicking this checkbox to disable shields, huh? and that just does something in the database, makes a box of one instead of zero right. or whatever. Yeah, but you'd have to run that on cron because every every time everybody creates a new site, then you'd have to do that for every new user and stuff like that. I guess I could use uh, strongarm because they have strongarm enabled on here. So what strongarm is is it lets you set values in the variables table to say it's always going to be this. Um, but and so I may be able to do strongarm to say that that always is going to be disabled, um, and you can force it so they can't change it. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure how to do that. I what I did is I said I'm creating a patch that's going to strip all of it out. So that's what I did. <laughs> so I know I won't use it. Um, and then Google Analytics, they can manage them. They can put their Google Analytics ID in here and then be able to check their Google Analytics to see what their site's been doing. All right. So let me go ahead. And is there a global Google Analytics that you could put in there, or is it by site? I don't know if there's a global Google Analytics, but I doubt it would be difficult to do. Um, yeah, or, I mean, you own the theme, really. You own the base theme for all their sites, so you can just put it in there if you really had to. Content, that's where they manage their content, um, just like content, and then you could kind of manage it by section, which for me, I think this is awesome because for my users, when they go to the regular content, the whole filter by, uh, that confuses them. So just being able to see what the content type here on the left and then click on it, it just makes a world of difference for people. Um, users. So uh, one, users manages your user account. Um, so that includes your email address, and your personal information. Now, today we're trying to get my picture to work and it wasn't working. So I'm not sure why that was. I didn't have time to bug it. But um, when they upload a picture, uh, they're able to use, I think it's file field crop or image field crop or something like that module. Um, and they upload and they can choose what area they want it to crop to and, and get there. So, but this is personal information which they put their name, their titles, and their photo. And so members. 
So you can add users that can do stuff to your site. Uh, th or they can add members that can do stuff to their site, like add publications and stuff like that. So this is really good for faculty members that don't do their websites and they sit, tell their research students, you're doing your website for me. And um, so they can add a member to their site and have their research student do their site for them. Which I, I, I saw a job description of it. That was the job description was to do the website for the faculty member. That was awesome. <laughs> well, that's an awesome graduate student job. Um, and, um, is there a granularity there in, in what levels of access they can be given? Hmm. I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I, so <laughs> on ours, we remove this. <laughs> they don't have the ability to do it, uh, mainly because it's hard to do it with CAS um, and be able to, because they, they can't add users. Because you don't want to really add user accounts, right? Because um, when you click add user, so I'm going to say add user. You can choose an existing user, or you can click add new user. Could you just take out the add new user? You probably could, and that would help. So, but I didn't want to go that far. It was a lot easier for me to like alter the form and say all this goes away, and and that. I didn't want to go quite into this one. Um, but yeah, I don't want to add users, but. You can actually add, they can actually add users to the site that don't necessarily have a website, but they, they can actually log into the site. Um, there is. Interesting. Maybe it's because I don't have two users, but there is a way to follow people. This is why I'm kind of confused right now. But there's a way to, to follow people. So you can go through the users of the site and you can follow them. And then when the updates happen to their site, you can come into this area and see what updates are happening to their site. Um, so if your faculty members work together, then you kind of follow them and see what's going on. Oh, that's why it is. It's that news. Sorry. So this is what I was talking about. All right. So um, the, here you could choose a colleague. So. This for my friends, you kind of type in who the user is to find them, or you can see all of them. And although it's weird to follow you myself, but you click follow, and then under activity, wow, it works. You can see everything that's happened to their site as it kind of goes along. Um, and here, under privacy settings, you can say, and this is important, faculty members will think this is very important. But you can say that somebody could be followed, or no, I don't want anybody to be able to follow me. Uh, don't record any of my history or anything like that. Um, although, I'm a big fan of that, because then you can see, oh, I did this. Or, or especially if you have somebody else doing your site, oh, you can see what they've done to your site lately. The last thing is the support, and that's for them to contact you. Um, and this is what I was talking about. If they click support and you hadn't created that contact form entry, then it would give you an error saying uh, the, you need to create a contact form. So here it gives me the contact form so they can contact. This is to contact me, not to contact them. Um, and then also they get help. And one thing that is awesome, I'm going to open this in a new window, is their help documentation has a lot of stuff. Uh, this on is local. Site, not, not over on Harvard's site. No, nope, this is, you can see it's my URL's colored up. Um, so you could potentially copy one of those if you want Yep, it's a uh, use advanced help. So it's just HTML files on the system. Um, and, you know, that's what we're doing. We're customizing it right now and adding more advanced help. Uh, one thing is, and you want to customize it because there's some Harvard specific stuff on here. Um, so uh, I'll just go into one of them. So each one of them has uh, quite a bit of information usually about, about what to do. Uh, and this, this, let's see if I can't find a good one. A lot of them have images. This one doesn't. So, but yeah, so there's the idea of flavors um, where that's how you create different 
colors of your theme. Um, so let me go quickly into the registration. Am I logged in? Uh, let me go back to here. Log out. The inner tubes disappeared. Oh, you gotta love conference wireless. Um, okay, so let me not go into registration and just talk about it. <laughs> um, let me see real quick. So, was this installing something vanilla like anybody can sign up for the setup right now, right? Because you're saying you can't even. Yeah, but this one right now is how anybody can set up, yeah. You also, also have the ability to give them to create multiple sites, so they can create like four or five sites. Um, or you can only have them so they can only do one. Um, and I don't know why you would have them create in the regular Loop Scholar projects, kind of makes more sense because you want more than one project. Can you still do the uh, moderated new users so that the system admins have to moderate them before the sites actually go public, before the users are actually able to log in? Um, there's not a way right now, so I don't uh, know, like but, settings. but I will say all these are, are content. It's a content type, right? So it's a organic group content type. Okay. So it's going to create a content. So you can use moderate right. before they can, their website can go live. Um, Do you have access to the user settings? So admin user, admin slash user slash settings where you can say new users, they create oh. a new user, but. Yeah, I guess that would do it. I guess that would do it too. I, I've never done it, so I'm I'm just taking well, I guess off of my head. Do you have a question? Well, I was just gonna say their personal website is technically an organic group. Right. Yeah, so these is organic groups, spaces, features, context. Yeah, those big the big ones. Yeah. Alright. So It won't send an email. So I can only show you that it looks up the username and make sure there's a username for them. Looks at the email address, make sure it hasn't been used yet. Um, they can choose the domain name. But this is all by default. This is not what I let them do. Um, and then if everything's hunky dory and nothing's bad, then you can go ahead and click create your site. And the new site will be created. It'll send them an email. Uh, you know, the usual user email, you need to click here to go to your site and then ask them to change their password and stuff like that. Um, and then they'll be able to go to their website. I don't have email set up. And you can see now this, this theme is different from the other theme. So it just shows a random theme from the list. Yeah, then they'll have a site. So as quickly as that, they can have a site running. Um, any other questions? So, would you, like you were saying, just put the landing thing for the new site? Mm -hmm. Would you be able to specify, like, always the same one as the default? Not, there's no setting for that. There's very few global settings for the software right now. Um, so there's no setting for that, but I don't know. I, I, yes, you would be in code, and that's a stupid answer. But no, there's no global setting for that. Yeah? So have you actually been using this for a little while? Or? So the actual software itself, like this part, I have not. Um, because I've been knee deep in code trying to get uh, our setup where you know we can have other people host sites um, by uploading their own site, that getting set up. So 
I haven't used it for a while, but I've been kind of digging into the code a lot more. That's that's my. But for me, the reason I did the session was because I think this thing is perfect for a whole lot of things, and this session just needed to be done. Everywhere that uh, they talk about it, I, I see people get excited about this software. I was just gonna say it seems really. I mean, a lot of it seems user intuitive. There are a few things that I'd be curious about whether or not they actually infused you know, the app. Right. Yeah, um, I, we haven't got to our user testing yet. This will, that'll, for us, that happens, that'll probably happen next week, because I just got finished with my part of the stuff. Um, and so, you know, I'm sure in user testing, there's gonna be a lot of problems that our users have, um, just like every user has. Um, but for me, you know, I'm dedicated to creating patches and, and getting stuff done, so I'll, I'm sure I'll be submitting patches in there. When you submit patches, you just do it to the Drupal profile? I do it to the Open Scholar, or, so they have Open two. Open Scholar has their own case tracker? Yeah, so let me, uh, let me make my next lovely slide. That is that. Um, so Open Scholar has their profile in D.O. So you can submit it there um, if you don't know the the code. If you know the code, there you have another one, Open Scholar underscore vSite, and that kind of hand that does all their virtual site stuff. It's this big module that kind of handles all this stuff. Um, and so you can submit patches there if it if it has to deal with vSite, Open Scholar vSite, and you'll know because the the in the modules directory there's an Open Scholar vSite directory, and that would go in there. Um, but as I've, you know, it's funny I encourage them to really get their modules up on Drupal.org because it makes doing, uh, downloading the profile easier. Um, and as soon as they got their module up on Drupal.org uh, as a separate module, they just now allowed pro install profiles to have modules inside the install profile. <laughs> and so that would be the preferred way they would have had to done it, but oh well. It was like a week afterwards too, it was awful. Um, so quickly, they're openscholar.harvard.edu is their website, and uh, Acquia is offering support um, and hosted installations for this now too. I don't know what theirs looks like because they would, I would assume they would have to strip out a lot of Harvard stuff out of it. So um, yeah, I don't know what theirs looks like. Uh, yeah, any other questions? Really? Yeah. I'll stand up now. An open installation. Uh huh. Um, so it's an active project. I'm just thinking bugs, um, patching. Right. Um, mod, the the sub modules that they're using. Uh, what's your feeling on how well supported is it? Uh, they've been really supportive. Oh, one thing I didn't add in there. Um, well, I'll get in that. But they've been really supportive with me. Um, and I wish I could. Throw out all their names, but Ferdinand, uh, Richard Brandon, I think his name, and then uh, I think it's Jason Wardis, but J Wardis, Ferdy, F E R D I, and R Brandon. Um, they've been really supportive uh, as far as getting my patches in, um, getting stuff done, even before. So I've been, I think I've been pushing them harder than they were really ready for, um, but uh, they've been getting my patches in pretty quickly. Um, yep, those guys. They have a team that built it, and they they have about three, four people that kind of help maintain it. So, would you recommend when, say, the new beta or whatever features module comes out, that you install just the features module? They'll update just the features module, or do you wait for the whole beta of whole thing. Scholar and just run? Yeah, it don't. Well, I shouldn't say. It'd be easier for you to just. Go with Open Scholar's updates um, because, especially features, because features, spaces, context, strong arm, all those have interdependencies. And so, if you upgrade one, it may not work with another one. So, you got to be. So, we did this. I even I got it wrong when I told them to upgrade stuff too. So, I was like, oh, well, we probably should upgrade that, that, that. And I had it wrong. And there's so many, there's just so much stuff interdependent that you got to really think about what needs to be. I actually, I had it in my whiteboard. Okay, this goes with this and can't go with that. So 
it's just easier to kind of upgrade it once. Unless you really need something you know it's not going to do anything. Project planning, timeline, um, how many developers, how long uh, have you guys been working on this? One half developer being me. Uh -huh. uh, I've been working on it uh, for three months, okay. not full time. Um, well, probably two months now, not full time, but in the last. More like 40, 30% of your time? Uh, well, in the last two two weeks, I've been doing almost full time. Um, so you can do, if you have, yeah, and I've been doing big customization. Yeah, if if let me think about let me rephrase that. We since we host SSH, that's taken the longest time, getting that set up security wise. Not Open Scholar stuff. Open Scholar stuff. If all you need, let's say CAS, all you need is CAS set up basic. You don't need. Attributes, you just need to make sure they're a user at your website, at your, in your domain, then it can, you can get it done in three days. And that's not design wise, right? Well, that's, that's, that's a separate that's story. That's, like rolling up vanilla. that's vanilla with CAS support right. in it. Well, well, I don't know what you guys do. Shibboleth, but, you know. Yeah, I, I, I want to hear about Shibboleth because we use, we use Shib too, but, uh, we, there's no SHIB module, I don't think. Is there? Is there? Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about that because I've always, I, every higher ed buff, I talk about SHIB. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it then, I guess. And we'll talk about other we'll central. About this, so. Really? Yeah. So we'll Any other questions before we end this? I think the next one starts at 11. Oh, yes. I'll say one thing, which is that this is, I'm learning about this now today, but we, our company is Drupal for a lot of hiring clients, so if you're, for some reason, don't want to work with us, we have a tool for hosting, you can always come find me. We've not got that, because we work solely with hiring.